how would your life be different if your salah became different? The stakes are really, really high because the Prophet Sallallahu said, a person can pray and only have a tenth of their prayer rewarded. A person can pray and only have a ninth of their prayer rewarded, an eighth of their prayer, a seventh, until he went to half. And he said, you will only have of your salah rewarded what you are present in. We exit out of the salah and if someone were to even ask us, what did you just recite? We'd be like, I don't even remember. And so when I'm in salah, I'm not going to assume that I'm going to have another salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Map to Mindful Salah series. Ammar al-Shukri here. Inshallah ta'ala, in this series of videos, you're going to learn how to take your salah to the next level with immediate effects, inshallah ta'ala. And in this first video, what we're going to do is we're going to designate the levels of salah based on the categorization of one of the greatest scholars of Islam, inshallah, so that we can figure out which level we're actually at, and then inshallah ta'ala, how we can get to the next level. And we're not only going to do that, but inshallah ta'ala, we're going to have some quick tips so that inshallah, your next prayer, the next prayer that you pray, the next prayer that you pray inshallah ta'ala, after watching this video, you'll be able to immediately sense a better salah. That's the goal inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha al mu'minun. Successful are the believers. And in that chapter, which is called the chapter of al mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins it by listing a number of qualities that those believers have who will be successful. And the first quality that he mentions, of course, is going to be Those who have khushu' mindfulness, presence, humble submissiveness in their salah. Those who have khushu' in their salah. But that immediately introduces for us a huge, huge problem. It is a problem that we all face, especially myself. That's the reason why I researched this topic, to be able to present these solutions, inshallah. And that is, the problem is, is that we've all experienced not just one prayer, but many prayers where we've stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were distracted. We stood in front of Allah and we tried to pay attention, we tried to be present in the salah, and we lose. We exit out of the salah, and if someone were to even ask us, what did you just recite? We'd be like, I don't even remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands khushu' presence, mindfulness, and at the same time we find that we're more distracted in salah than anywhere else. Why is that? Why is that the case? Well, firstly, before why, what are the stakes? The stakes are really, really high because the Prophet sallallahu said, a person can pray and only have a tenth of their prayer rewarded. A person can pray and only have a ninth of their prayer rewarded, an eighth of their prayer, a seventh, until he went to half. And he said, you will only have of your salah rewarded what you are present in. And so I need to increase my focus. I need to increase my presence. I need to increase my mindfulness. I need to be present when I'm talking to the king of kings. So why does this happen? Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu She asked him about distraction and prayer. And that shows us Aisha radiallahu anha, the Quranic Arabic, not just Arabic, but Quranic Arabic was her first language. This is what she spoke at home. This is what, so she's understanding the Quran perfectly. But at the same time, she and the companions and the Prophet Sallallahu house, we're not talking about low iman or anything like that. She's one of the greatest companions. She's one of the greatest women ever. And she also experiences this. The Prophet Sallallahu was asked by Aisha about distraction in prayer. And he said, that is a theft that shaitan steals from the prayer of any one of you. Meaning that shaitan realizes that this salah is the most important function that you and I use to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on any given day. It is the most important act of worship that we offer. And so he realizes that this is the thing that benefits us the most. So this is the thing that he tries to steal from us the most. And that's why you and I can enter into salah and all of a sudden we get reminded about where we parked our car and tasks that we forgot about that we need to do. We remember them all of a sudden in salah. So number one, what are the levels of salah? What are the levels for us to even designate where we're at so we can figure out where we need to be? Ibn al-Qayyim, in al-Wabil al-Sayyib, Ibn al-Qayyim, he has this five-level categorization of prayer. And he said the first level is a person who, and, and what I want you to do is I want you to figure out which level you're at. He says the first level is a person who does not fulfill the pillars of the wudu or the pillars of the salah, and they don't pray on time. So this is a guy who comes and the elbow still isn't washed and the ankle isn't washed properly and they're praying dhuhr and asr time or maybe they're coming and they're praying fajr late and they're praying isha late and they're, they're just, it's a mess. 
And he said, this person is punished. First person is punished because they're not, they're not establishing the prayer like it's supposed to be prayed. And then he said, the second person is a person who does pray the prayer as far as the, the outside. They make what they will do properly. They're praying on time. And this person is a person who they pray their prayer, but they lose completely the battle against shaitan. They come into the salah and they're just rattling off different things. And yeah, they're going into ruku' and yeah, they're going into sujood and they're doing all of that properly, but the heart is not present at all. He said, this person is muhasab. This person is held into a, this person is accountable. They're going to be accounted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Number three, the third person is a person who's better than that. They, they make their wudu properly, they're fulfilling their rights, and they're, they're not completely zoned out when they're in salah. They're zoning in and out. They're fighting. They're trying. They're struggling with shaitan. They're trying to focus. They're coming back. They're bringing it back. He said, this person, this person is, uh, this person is forgiven because they're struggling. This person is in a state of struggle. And so if you're in zone out mode, level two, you want to come to level three, where at the, you are forgiven for your shortcomings in the salah. And then he said, number four, the fourth level, is a person who they enter into the salah, and they're not, they're not struggling with shaitan anymore. They're present in the salah. They're listening. They're enjoying. They're engaging with the salah. And he said, this person is rewarded. This person now, the salah for them is a, is a great reward. And then the fifth level, he said, this person is a person who when they enter into the salah, when they enter into the salah, everything else dissolves. And it's like they've taken their heart and they've placed it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing else. And he said, this person is brought near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person is brought near. And I don't want you to think this is stuff that's like from a book. I've had a convert come up to me after a session on mindfulness in the prayer. And he came up to me and he said, what's wrong with your, what's wrong with my prayer? What's going on? And I said, what do you mean? He said, is there something wrong with my prayer? I said, what do you mean? He said, all of this stuff that you're talking about, distraction and how to co overcome, he said, I don't feel any of that. I don't experience any of that. He said, when I stand in front of Allah, everything disappears and it's just me and him. In fact, he said, I feel most alive when I'm in salah. Everything else, when, when I'm outside of salah, he says, I actually feel less alive. And my body responds to the time of salah. He's like, I don't even need an adhan app or anything like that. He said, my, I get goosebumps. I know it's time for salah. So he's like, what's wrong with my salah? I was like, dude, there's nothing wrong with your salah. There's nothing wrong with your salah. It's us, we've got the problem. It's our salah that needs work. That's what we're at level twos and level threes. We're trying to get to level four, and you're already at level five, mashallah. Okay. But the idea here is how do we get from one level to the next? And inshallah ta'ala, I want to share with you a few tips right from this video. Number one is to come to a truce with time. Come to a truce with time. One of the problems of level one, that person who's rushing through the prayer, Ibn al-Qayyim says they don't give any of its rights. They go into ruku' and they bounce right back up. They don't even, they don't even, they go into sujood and they bounce right back up. They peck at the ground like the Prophet ﷺ described. Is that they feel like they're in a rush. Well, why are you in a rush? What's the difference between a prayer that's prayed properly and a prayer that's rushed? At the end of the day, it's maybe one or two minutes. That's it. And so you are robbing yourself of the prayer just because of one, of one or two minutes? And then what are you going to do? You're going to get back on your phone and waste five minutes? Or you're going to jump into your car and sit in traffic for five minutes? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the controller of time. And so say this to yourself. When you feel like you're rushing because you need time, say to yourself, Allah is the controller of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the next five minutes of mine the most blessed. For me to make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, Allow traffic to be facilitated for me so that I don't rush through this salah so that I can get to where I'm going is better for me and is, is real. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls all of this. And so say to yourself, Allah is the controller of time and he's the one who told me not to rush through my salah. And so let me take my time. You can pray a beautiful prayer, a perfect prayer in just four or five minutes. So don't rob myself of that because of one or two minutes. Number one, say to yourself, Allah is the controller of time anytime you feel like you're rushing through the salah. So number one is make a truce with time. Number two, seek stillness in every station. Stillness in every station. 
the Prophet ﷺ, there's a famous hadith of the man who prayed badly. And he prayed one time and the Prophet told him, he said, go back and pray because you didn't pray. Can you imagine that? A person being told by the Prophet ﷺ, that prayer that you just offered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So you have to pray again. How many of our prayers, if we had the fortune of the Prophet ﷺ watching us and supervising us, how many times would he have told us, go back and pray you didn't pray? And so the man went and prayed again. Now he knows the Prophet ﷺ is watching him. And what happens? The Prophet ﷺ still says to him, go back and pray because you didn't pray. A third time he goes. Now he's definitely going to pray better, right? The Prophet ﷺ the third time tells him and he says, go back and pray because you didn't pray. The man finally says, yeah, Rasulullah, I don't, I don't know a prayer better than this. This is all I got. And so the Prophet ﷺ then tells him and he says, a number of things that became understood to be pillars of the prayer. He says, when you, uh, when you stand, then make takbir and then recite what's easy of you of the Qur'an. And then he says, bow. Here's the point here. He says, bow until you are tranquil. Itma'nan, tranquil in your bowing. And then he says, stand until you are completely erect. A lot of people, when they stand, they hit the 45 and then they go back down. They, they, don't, even, they don't even stand up straight. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, stand up straight until you're completely erect. And then go into sujood until you are tranquil in your sujood. Tranquility means that for that moment, it doesn't have to be a long moment, but for that moment, you are completely still. Seek stillness in every station. Stillness. Come back up. Stillness. Go back into sujood. Stillness. In every station, you seek stillness. Again, that doesn't add a lot of time to the prayer, but it perfects your prayer. So that's number two. Number three is practice bringing yourself back. Practice bringing yourself back. That, you know what? At the heart of all of these things is when we allow ourselves to be distracted in our conversations, and it's not just in the salah, but even with people, there's this notion of, of taking it for granted that I'm going to have another conversation with this person. I'm not paying attention to my mom right now. I'm going to have another conversation with her in the future that's going to be more meaningful. But if you realize that, you know what? I'm not going to take this conversation for granted. I don't know when my last conversation with my mom is going to be or my last conversation with my dad is going to be or my last conversation with my spouse is going to be, my children is going to be. So let me be present in every conversation that I have. And so when I'm in salah, I'm not going to assume that I'm going to have another salah. I'm going to pray like it's my last salah and I'm going to be present and I'm going to bring myself back when I get distracted. I notice when I get distracted so I bring myself back. I notice that I'm distracted again and I bring myself back and that'll bring us immediately to level three, that level that of a person who's struggling, which is a good place to be. It's a good place to be, especially if you're in level two or level one, you want to continue to get better. And so this technique will help us not only in the salah, but outside of the salah. Every time you're talking to your family member or talking to anybody, a friend, and you notice that your mind is wandering, bring yourself back. Practicing being present. Don't let yourself get distracted. And so bringing yourself back all the time. And number four, the last one, is very, very simple. It's to introduce variety into your salah. So this is number four. So we've talked about truce with time, seeking stillness in every station. Number three is bring yourself back. And number four is introduce variety into your salah. What does that mean? It means that when you put your salah on autopilot, it's easy to get distracted. When you're driving home from your work or from your school or from any place, the masjid, any place that you're really, really familiar with, you know the route. You can talk to someone on the phone and you don't pay attention to the roads or the lights or anything because you know exactly where you're going and how to get there. But when there's a detour on the street or your exit is normally blocked off, your normal exit is blocked off, what do you say to that person on the phone? You say to them, let me call you back. Why? Because I need to focus on where I'm going. I don't know this street. I don't know that I'm in a different neighborhood now. You are saying this route is unfamiliar and so I need to increase my focus. I have to take myself off of autopilot. And that's what we do in Salah a lot. We go into the same Salah every single time. We're reciting the same chapters of the Quran. We're saying the same Dua in our Sujood. No, break off from the routine. Come off of autopilot. Introduce chapters that you don't normally recite. We all have chapters that are familiar to us, but they're not familiar because they're not our regular in Salah. So dust them off and recite those chapters. Learn new chapters. It's okay. Investing in the Salah is beautiful. It's one of the, it's the greatest investment that we can make. Introduce new du'as in your Salah. So these four things, inshallah ta'ala, will have an incredible effect on your Salah. In the next video, inshallah ta'ala, 
we're going to go over a number of tips that we can do inside of the salah inshallah ta'ala that will increase our presence. And I want you to just imagine, I have two questions for you. What would your life be like? How would your life be different if your salah became different? You know, I had one student of mine. He attended a mindfulness course with me and he said that his relationship with his parents became better. And I asked him, I said, what changed? He said, my relationship with my parents is better than it's ever been in my entire life. He's 20 years old now. I said, what changed? He said, my salah changed. What would be different in your life if your salah changed, if your salah became better? That's number one. Number two, out of these tips so far, which one, I want you to go in and implement it, and then I want you to come back, inshallah ta'ala, and I want you to comment which one of them is the one that benefited you the most. And if you have another tip that inshallah ta'ala benefits you with regards to salah, I want you to comment with that too so that we can all benefit inshallah ta'ala from your experience as well. Jazakum khair and I'll see you in the next video inshallah.